All right, loves, I hope I'm picking up where we left off. I doubt it, I'm gonna have to start all over. Oh man. All right, let me start over, hold on. All right, blood pressure. The pressure exerted on the blood is the pulses of arteries as it flows through the body. Blood pressure is usually taken with the patient sitting down. Blood pressure is always recorded as a fraction in even numbers. The sounds you hear are called Karadkov sounds. We're only interested in phase one and phase five. Phase one is the systolic or the contraction phase. That's the tapping sound you first hear as the cup is deflated. This is the highest pressure, all right? Now phase two you need to know is the oscillatory gap. That's just a gap that's heard in hypertension. You would have to be a very, very, very trained doctor clinician to hear all these phases. Phase three is the sharp tapping rhythm. Diastole or diastolic is the relaxation phase, the last tapping sound as the cup is deflated. This is phase five. So phase one is systolic, phase two is diastolic. Instrument needed to measure blood pressure, you need a stethoscope to listen and a sphygmomanometer, that is the blood pressure cuff. A complete cardiac cycle is a combination of the systolic and diastolic action of the heart. That's a complete cardiac cycle. And cardinal signal, cardinal signs are blood pressure, temperature, pulse, respiration. It is not height, it is not weight, and it is not body mass index, all right? Get it? All right, letters D. I'm sorry, let us see. The stethoscope is typically placed over the brachial artery, right here. Same one we use for infant CPR, all right? Right in the bend of the elbow. But you wanna tap the head of the stethoscope, make sure you can hear it so you got it facing the right way. Uh, always palpate or feel for the brachial pulse before putting the stethoscope on. The brachial pulse is palpated in what's called the antecubital fossa. That's this area right up in here, right in the bend in the elbow. And now, this is, you need to know, if a patient has had a du surgical double mastectomy, both breasts removed, the pulse that you're going to have to use is the popliteal pulse. That's the one behind the knee, all right? And a thigh cuff must be used. When taking blood pressure, let the cuff go at a steady pace. Don't start and stop, start and stop. It takes practice. That's why I let you all take these instruments home. All right, what factors can affect blood pressure? Well, if the cup is too big or too small, the systolic or diastolic can be five points lower than it should be. Placing the cup on the patient's arm, you place it way down here, way up here. No, it's gotta be put on right. Talking or room noises, starting and stopping the cup deflation. You gotta let it go smoothly. If the patient's in pain, have a full bladder or their legs are crossed, or the arm that you're taking the blood pressure in is above or below the heart level. You gotta have it kind of right there. Smoking cigarettes can also affect high blood, I mean blood pressure. Now, hypotension is abnormally low blood pressure. It is a sudden drop. With the cuff in place, take the patient's blood pressure. I'm oh, sorry, orthostatic hypotension is the sudden drop. Letter A, orthostatic hypotension is a sudden drop in blood pressure. With the cuff in place, Take the blood pressure with the patient lying down. I know before we said sitting up, but take it lying down in this instance. Then while the cup, take the blood pressure, get a reading. Don't take anything off though. While the cup is still on, change the patient's position from lying to standing quickly and take the blood pressure again, okay? And the patient's blood pressure will probably drop. Now they may exhibit symptoms of vertigo, which is dizziness, or syncope, which is fainting. The opposite of hypotension is hypertension. There's no signs or symptoms, all right? That's why it's called the silent killer. If you have a patient with a systolic or top number of 160 or higher and a diastolic of one over 100 or over, however, some signs, even though I said there's none, sometimes, you know, there's something for everything. Some of the signs can be epistaxis, which is nosebleed. Headache, I mean bad headaches, I'm not just talking like a little bitty one. Vertigo, dizziness, angina, which is the combination of the not level oxygen in the heart. Atherosclerotic plaque, that plaque that forms and it gets hard and it hardens in the inside of the artery and it affects the blood flow. It can lead to hypertension. 
Now, for hypertension, there's two specific types we talk about. The first one is essential. And I don't know any high blood pressure that's necessary. And that's what essential means. There's no known etiology, which means no known cause. Possibly if the patient's in pain, has advanced age, weight, okay, treatment with medications. But this one, the, hype, the systolic is at least 160. The diastolic is at least 100 or over. Both of these can be higher. That's essential. Secondary is caused by a known disease. It does have a known etiology. Another disease could cause it. Complications of pregnancy, which is that preeclampsia. It can also be caused by renal disease. Heredity, if you know hypertension runs in your family, please take everyone's blood pressure on a regular basis. I don't mean you gotta walk around like a doctor every day, but check their blood pressure, all right? Watch your diet and anybody else in the family's diet, all right? Um, alcohol, I'm gonna spell alcohol wrong, use or a poor diet. The goal of treating hypertension is to get the numbers below 130 over 80. Next one, here. I put a lot of ink into this one and Toto hit a fit. Never, 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 and I mean never, when you're taking blood pressure, you've got the pump cup, a cup on, pumped up, and you start to release it, and you see the needle start bouncing, but you don't hear anything. Do not go by that number. I will find you, and I will kick your ass with my foot sideways. And I just got an injection in the hip, so that leg's good for a little while, okay? So... Do not rely on the needle bouncing. Do not follow the bouncing ball. Go by what you hear, all right? Okay, palpating the systolic. This is something that most people don't even do, but it's on the test. This is if a patient comes in for the very first time, and normally we pump it up to 180, but let's say the doctor wants you to palpate the systolic. What you're gonna do is put the cuff on the patient's arm, but this time you're gonna feel for the radial pulse right here in the wrist. Oh, you like that one, all right? And you're going to pump the cuff up. And you don't need a stethoscope for this. Pump the cuff up, up, okay? And let me see something. Pump it up to where you can no longer feel the, the pulse in the wrist. Remember that number, all right? Then release it, let air out, and then take the blood pressure normally, but pump it up to 30 points higher than what you got doing. Let's say we got, I couldn't feel it after 120. I let it go, put my stethoscope in, pump it up to 150, all right? That is palpating the systolic. All right, just take it as usual after that. If you get a 60 on palpation, let's say I'm holding this and I pump it up and I don't have to put the stethoscope in, but I, I only get a 60. Let the cuff go, let the air out, start taking blood pressure, and I would only have to pump it up to 90, all right? You're going to roll the patient's sleeve when you're taking blood pressure. Only about three to four inches, not seven or eight inches, but you don't want to take it over clothing either. You want to get them to not to remove their clothes, but roll the sleeves up, all right? Okay, uh, let's see. Terms that we've learned. Syncope is fainting. Essential or primary hypertension no cause. Secondary is definitely a cause. Orthostatic, all of these words are highlighted in your notes. Orthostatic hypotension, patient lies down then sits up. <laughs> uh, hypertension is high blood pressure. It's abbreviated HTN. Hypotension is low blood pressure. Vertigo is dizziness. Systole or systolic is the contraction phase of the heart. That's the first sound you hear in blood pressure. Diastole or diastolic is the relaxation phase of the heart. That's the last number you hear. Mm -hmm. My friend, speak mo manometer, okay? That's a blood pressure cuff. Carotid cough sounds, that's the name of actual tapping and thumping sounds you hear. Cardiac cycle or complete systolic and diastolic. Um, etiology means cause. Cardinal signs. Okay, no, I'm kidding. Cardinal signs, blood pressure, temperature, pulse, respiration. No height, no weight, and no body mass index. And then we have bradycardia, which is a fast heartbeat. And then we, I mean fast, I'm talking like, you know, in a, like the flutter and the fibrillation kind of thing. Then we, I'm sorry, that was 
Bradycardia is slow. Think of the Brady Bunch. It was a cute show, but they were kind of slow, all right? So Bradycardia is a slow heartbeat. Tachycardia is the fast heartbeat. And if I were you, I'd become familiar with this. Let me show you. Each little line, each little individual line is two. So here we have 90. 92, no, I can't hold this still. Let's see. Okay, don't forget that. Okay. 92, 94, 96, 98. That's 80, not 90. I'm sorry, I can't read. 80. 82, 84, 86, 88, 90. 92, 94, 96, 98, 100. 102, 104, 106, 108, and so forth. All right? Every number, little line, is the whole number two. All right. Love y'all. I think that's it. Don't forget, we have um, checkoffs tomorrow. Okay? 9 o'clock on the dot. Bad weather or good weather, because if you don't check off, you don't pass. And uh, I have three of my lovelies that are going to take the exit exam on Wednesday. All right? Okay, God bless y'all, and I'll see you later.